three. Well, welcome. Uh, we have uh, Millennial Rain here with us uh, at the Citadel for Metal Fellowship at ProgressiveRockCentral.com. And thank you guys for taking uh, time out of your busy schedules to discuss your latest album, Worlds on Fire. This is a fantastic album, and we're going to get into it, talk about it. Uh, but do you guys want to say hi or say anything uh, to begin with? We appreciate you having us. Yeah. Thank yes. you for having us. And yeah. So we've got Dave, uh, Pedro, and uh, Tiffany Galshoot, uh, who's the lead singer. And hopefully I said that right. Um, we practiced it a little bit before we, we got started. Um, so the, these guys uh, made it here today, and I really, like I say, appreciate it because uh, it's rare to get most or all of the band. So fantastic. Tell us a little bit. I, I'm new to, to this band, and probably a lot of people listening are as well. Tell us how you got started, how you found each other, how you've emerged, and how you've evolved. As far as the very beginning of the band, it actually started as a recording project. It wasn't even really a band. It was just me and one other guy. And I was doing all the instrumentation and he was doing all the vocals. And uh, that was back around 2012 when we released the first one. And that was actually more of an 80s metal project. Just a lot of songs. I actually played in a band not to be confused with a movie, but back in the early 2000s called 316. Wow. And, and uh, we had a bunch of unreleased songs and I had the name Millennial Rain years later and I just, I released those songs under this name. And then I was working on the second album and by that time, all the power metal influences were really coming out because that's all I've been listening to since early, since the early 2000s and late 90s. And I recruited another uh, different guy, and we were going to put the first album, which became Carry the Fire, by the way, the first album. And uh, uh, we were working on the album, and in the process, in 2014, we actually signed with Ulterium Records. And uh, Emil uh, Westerdahl, who owns Ulterium, he started encouraging us, well, he says, it's great that it's a recording project, we'll release the album no matter what, but you should, you should start thinking about maybe forming it into an actual band. So James and I, the vocalists, we started discussing it and we decided, well, you know, let's just give it a shot and see what happens. So uh, we actually recruited some other guys that not, not anybody you see here that was back in the early stages, but some friends of mine that played in another band here locally. And uh, we ended up doing, you know, a lot of nationally opening shows. Uh, we toured with Striper. Uh, uh, and just, you know, that was basically the beginning of the band. Well, after all that was done, well, the three guys that we had recruited uh, decided to drop out and just go back to what they were doing. So that's when we did another recruiting process. And that's how we ended up with Neil, who's not here today, but that's how we ended up with him. And uh, we had a guy by the name of uh, Steve Nichols, playing drums. He played with us for several years. And uh, there was another friend of mine uh, who sing, he's now singing for uh, uh, Crimson Glory and a couple other bands, who, Travis Wills, who came in. Now, he wasn't an actual member of the band. He, uh, he actually filled in because we still had several, several commitments. Uh, we had shows we were supposed to open for like Hammerfall. There was another, another Striper show we were supposed to do. Uh, theocracy we were supposed to do a full weekend with them oh wow uh, yeah we were supposed to go we had in fact we had a booking in mexico uh, at a festival called exoto fest just several things still on the books when james decided to leave well travis this friend of mine stepped in and and filled in for us to get through all these commitments and the second album was one of them the great divide and he he ended up singing on the on the great divide as well well after all that was done Travis stepped down and uh, we went looking for another full-time vocalist, someone to be a member. And Steve, the drummer at the time, uh, he had a friend here in the Dallas area. His name's David Houston. He's a vocal coach. 
And Steve reached out to him and said, look, we need a, we need a singer for, for this band and, you know, give us, give us some names of some people that you think that would be suited for it. And uh, according to Steve, when he talked to him, he said, said the first thing he asked him, well, are you against a female? We thought about it and we were like, no, we really hadn't given it much thought. Yeah, we'll, 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 we'll interview or uh, audition anybody. So anyway, he sent us Tiffany and Tiffany and, and he both came out. She auditioned. And we still had a couple more shows lined up. Uh, we had one with Accept and another one with Striper, like literally like two weeks later that wow. uh, she went and sang with us on. She did a great job. We we talked it over, said, okay, well, you know, she was thrown into the fire. She handled it very well. Uh, but we think she's right for the job. So we ended up asking her to stay uh, uh, permanently, which she did, of course. And then uh, fast forward a few years, well, Steve, uh, after we had gone to Europe and did another did another festival in Mexico, as a matter of fact, we had a show with Striper again immediately after coming back from Mexico. Uh, after that, well, he decided, you know, he'd had enough. He was ready to retire. He just he you know he'd done with the traveling, all the touring, and, and he decided to step down. And we still had a show lined up with Petra uh, following yeah. in August, and uh, we kind of discussed you know, kicked around some names of, you know, we needed to fill in. Well, Neil mentioned, he says, well, what about Pedro? And they, they were down in Mexico with us. Let's, let's talk to him and see if he'd be interested in filling in. So we did. And Pedro came and did the show with us with, with uh, Petra. And things just went so smoothly and went very well. So we discussed that and said, we ought to just ask him to join the band full time, including the other band he was, he was uh, already playing with. And he accepted. So here we are with this, with this final, uh, lineup of the band. All right, and uh, Pedro and um, forget the other guy, um, Neil. 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 Uh, they're both new and uh, weren't on this album, if I'm not mistaken. Or yeah, no, Neil's been with us since 2017. No, right. he was. All right, I'm the newbie. <laughs> All right, so you weren't on this album yet, but you will be the one that you're working on, obviously. Yeah. All right, yeah. and uh, you got. Uh, do you want to talk about uh, how you felt becoming a member of the band here? Oh, it was you know, it was a, uh, it was fun doing that that Petra show, and like like they've said, you know, uh, they approached me about it. I took some time to, you know really really consider it pray about it you know but you know just everything seemed to click you know and and ever since then it's just been fun you know gearing up for the the release of world on fire and you know i mean it's just been fun for me <laughs> that's that's the only way that keep, keeps coming up you know so i'm just having a, a fun time so uh yeah. but yeah everything just seemed to fit in can't beat that and Brittany, tell us how you feel about <laughs> you, you, Tiffany. She Tiffany. walked into the fire and survived, and uh, I, I think she is doing a fantastic job. Thank you. Yeah, it's it's been a fun ride with the guys uh, the past several years for sure. It's been amazing. All right. Well, let's uh, jump into. Uh, uh, Tell me a little bit about the concept and idea about World of Fire. But before, actually, before that, how how is the album being received? Is it uh, doing well? Is um, um, that you obviously have your former fans that probably grabbed it right away, but have you expanded? It? Have you found more of an audience that? Um, yeah, we didn't know about like me. Uh, we didn't know about this band. And it's like, oh, my God, this is wonderful. Uh, have you been seeing growth that way? Well, the album doesn't actually release until uh, June 14th. But, you know, the two two single, uh, the, the video singles that have released have been received very well. Mm -hmm. Good. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, what reviews we've seen on it so far, and I want to thank you for your review because that, that, that one was really that was high praise and you know mm -hmm. just we've been we've been seeing a lot of first with this album uh just things that's going on uh you know like just the other day uh apple 
uh, added us to the new metal that you need to check out. I forget what the exact name of it was, but you know that's something that's never happened before. Spotify did the same thing. Send me uh, those links. I'll I'll add it to this. Okay, and, uh, right. we'll do. And uh, you know, just the videos, especially the first one. The first one, I think it wasn't two weeks. It already had a hundred thousand views on it. And wow. you know, that's that's for for us. That's that was that was pretty that was pretty nice. But yeah, as far and as far as the reviews, uh, everything we have seen has just been on a shining level. You know, just like yours and. And again, we appreciate that. And we're very, very pleased that it's being received as well as it is. Excellent. Um, the, what is the, I mean, I think I know what you mean by the concept, but just describe it to people that might be new to this. Uh, what is, what do you mean by world on fire? Tiffany, you want to answer that one? You sing it. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Um, so the concept of World on Fire? Sure. Um, I mean, I kind of, I, I guess it just kind of goes with what's going on in the world today. Um, you know, um, I'm trying to think of how to, how to describe it. I don't know, Dave, I feel like you're better at, at this um, <laughs> than, I, than I am. I can't think right now. Okay. Uh, well, the, the, she, by the, the name way, actually. By the way, sorry. she's been battling uh, cold, and uh, yeah, and she's she's not a hundred percent right now. She's yeah. definitely here, and appreciate her, you know, pushing to to be here. So thank you very much for that. And yeah, I'm sorry, I don't feel, I don't feel good, so I'm trying. <laughs> it's all but she's doing. She's doing very good, just like she walked through that fire the first time. Yes. All right. All right. Well, it's all good. Uh, yeah, the actual name is it's it comes from a line uh, in the song which we named "World on Fire." Uh, the song itself is actually about David and Ziklag. Wow! Uh, you know, it's uh, it's literally, you know, sometimes we go through you know mm -hmm. trials, tribulations, whatever you know, and sometimes our world is on fire, but there is always you know, a final outcome, you know, and I can say, <clears throat> excuse me, I can say from a personal, personal standpoint, you know, you know, being who we are, believers, whatever, you know, we're not immune to, to the trials that come along, just like any other normal person. But the difference is there's always victory at the end of it. And, you know, you know Jesus, Jesus himself said, that, you know, you know, if you're, if you believe in me and I am with you, you know, you, I have overcome the world and you shall overcome the world. And that's just basically what it boils down to, uh, world on fire, but yet, uh, you know, it always ends in victory. If, 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 you know, if you're a solid believer, it always ends in victory. And I'm, I'm glad you embrace that faith. Uh, I also am a Christian and uh, you're not afraid to, not not that you should fear, but um, you're willing to talk about it and share it with others. And, and that is unique. Um, and thank you for that. And um, keep doing it. That's who, that's who we are. You know, that's, yeah. and that's one thing that Neil, the bass player, and I discussed before we released this album. You know, the first two, you know, we, we had different singers on the first two albums. They were believers as well. Everybody in the band is believed. This is, this is a Christian band. That's, that's who we are. Uh, but the first two albums, you know, we felt that the some of the lyrics may have been just a little too vague. And we made a conscious decision on this album. We were going to come out, you know, in full support of who we are. This is who we are. This is what we sing about. This is our lives. You know, you know, uh, you know we appreciate people. And, and that's another thing, you know, you ask about the reception. I have actually seen comments from people who are professed atheists and they're saying how much they enjoy this album. And that says a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? So no, that, and, and the good news of that is the more they listen to it, you know, you, you can't listen to the word without it having some type of effect on you. You can't. You know? So that's that's the point of it all, you know, to be outspoken and for people to know who we are, not just that, but for it to reach the people themselves. And that's what it's all about. 
Now you mentioned the release date and uh, will you do, I'm sure you will, but I'd uh, ask anyway, will you do a, some sort of tour for World on Fire? Well, as far as touring goes, that's something that we have to be invited to do. It's like when we toured with Striper there a few years ago, several years ago, uh, that was an invitation from their management. And that came off of opening for them. Uh, as a matter of fact, now, this was the story I got. Uh, now, these were his words, not mine. Uh, Michael Sweet, Sweet went back, and before they went out for their To Hell with the Devil 30th anniversary, well, he told their manager, you know, as far as for they were looking for an opening act uh, for certain shows. And Michael Sweet says, well, you ought to check out this band because they're a high-quality band. And again, that, those were his words. Uh, they, they're a high-quality band, and uh, we think they'd fit very well. And that's how we ended up on that tour. So, but to answer your question, uh, the following week, uh, we do have a uh, uh, an album release event plan for the for the very next week that we're doing in Fort Worth. And as a matter of fact, Greg X Bowles, who was the original vocalist for Petra, uh, he's doing it with us. He's going to be speaking. He's going to be performing some songs, and uh, that's that's the only thing that we have planned right off the bat now we've gotten another invitation to mexico but we actually we haven't we haven't accepted that yet we're still still looking at some logistics on that before we accept it excellent well good good um well you've mentioned some of your influences and and one of them um in which i was so happy to to hear it um is uh definitely um triumph and um, I'm I'm as much a Rush fan as anyone else out there, but there was another band from Toronto, and they they do get overlooked. And um, that cover you did um, is um, is excellent, um, and uh, Allied Forces, um, and that was a great album. Uh, but I, oh goodness, we're almost down to that ten minute mark here. But um, just got to ask you, uh, hopefully it's not the only one you're going to do. Hopefully you jump into maybe fight the good fight, hold on, or lay down the line uh, from just a game, which that was definitely my favorite of uh, yeah. Triumph. But uh, first of all, thank you for that. If you haven't heard their cover, please listen. It's very good. And please go back and listen to uh, triumphs uh, catalog as well mm. but uh, do you think you'll do uh, any of those others it's a possibility uh i'm you know, i know you're not a cover band so you know you no, know. no but i but i am a huge triumph fan uh i love rakim's voice i love uh i love gill's voice uh you know gill's actually the one that sang allied forces but you know allied forces the album was a that was a pinnacle album for me. Uh, it came out in 80 and I graduated in 81. And, you know, it just, there was a whole slew of songs on that album that just spoke to me and Fight the Good Fight was most definitely the number one. Uh, I've always wanted to cover that. But the thing about covering Fight the Good Fight, I've heard a lot of covers of it. And, and I'm just I'm just speaking in my opinion here. I'm not, I'm not uh, insulting anybody, but in my opinion, they're just really not up to snuff is what, what, what they should be. Yeah. You know, if I, if we cover that, you know, it's, that's something that I would want to do justice. And I'll mm -hmm. go as far to say, you know, we actually covered that back in, in, uh, we actually made a, a video for that back in 2020 and we're going to revamp the video to release uh, after the album release. But the, the icing on the cake for that, for that song, uh, we released it in 2021. It was just something to do because, you know, there were no shows going on and nothing like that. So, but we released it in 2021. Triumph themselves caught up, caught wind of that. They, re, they uh, released it from their Facebook page. A few days later, I got a, I got an email from whoever it was that operates all their, all their uh, media Public sites. Connection. Yeah. All that and said, Hey, the band, absolutely loves your video would you send me a copy of it please so i did and you can go to the triumph page now and there's our video of allied forces on the triumph youtube page you know right. it's right there in the middle of all their stuff 
which was a a huge compliment. It was a Definitely. huge compliment. Yeah, they really always had the good lyrics. Uh, I mean, oh, yeah. Rush, Rush did too as well. But you definitely could sense a difference between the yeah. two of them. I agree yeah. with that. I, I, especially Triumph. I mean, they're, all their lyrics were very uplifting. Yeah. Even though they weren't a Christian band, I, I couldn't even tell you if they're believers or not. But everything they sang about was just very clean and uplifting. They were just a very enjoyable band to listen to. You get a sense that they probably, yeah, I don't know either. But yeah, mm -hmm. uh, you get that that feeling. All right, uh, let's see. Do we have enough time? Yeah. All right, let's talk about the new single because that ends up being my favorite song on the album, Wandering. And oh my God, the video. Where did you guys film that? Or was that film that you got off the internet? Or... How did that go? And and by the way, just a, a fantastic song. And thank you for putting that uh, the video out. But um, uh, well, Tiffany, you enjoy it. thank you, Tiffany. You do an excellent job. But go ahead, whoever wants to talk about that. And if we have to go into the next round on that one, I don't mind because I love that song. Go ahead. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, as far as the uh, video goes the shots of tiffany is actually just here in my studio wow. uh, we just shot her singing you know singing the the lyrics to the song and did it from two or three different different angles uh there's actually a story behind that video because the guy that was originally supposed to do it uh got covid and he said he said it wasn't his first time to get it and it knocked him out of being able to finish the video and everything was running very behind. So our record label contacted, uh, you know, they're based in Europe and they contacted a guy there in Europe who uh, is the singer for the band Signum Regis, if you're familiar with them. No. And he does, he does video work on the side and he actually did all the video work. I just gave him the concept that the basic concept we were looking for with the lyrics, you know, mm -hmm. you know, how living basically in a dry life and, you know, finding the answer or finding water, you know, the water of life. And he just took that concept and ran with it. And he did a fantastic job with it in a very short amount of time. I'm talking about the lyric video with the sand dunes and, and that. that's what I'm talking. Yes. Oh, okay. That's exactly what I'm talking okay. about. Okay. I just want to make sure we're on the same page. Yes. Yes. Anyone else want to talk about that? Tiffany, uh, what does that song do for you as a singer? Because I know I, I would love singing it, even though I can't sing. <clears throat> and I mean, I sing it with you, but, you know. I mean, <clears throat> I like that song a lot. Um, I think when it comes to, like, a certain lyric in that song, when it says, um, now you're here with me, the old life is history. Yeah. To me, that speaks volume because it's like when you finally – choose to walk with the Lord and you choose to um, give everything to him and fully submit to him, um, you leave your old life behind and you kind of leave all your worries behind, all of your anxiety, um, just everything. And you let him, you know, you're just like, okay, it's all yours now. Like you take it. I'm not going to worry about anything else. I'm living life for you. Um, and that's currently the walk that like I'm, you know, on right now. Um, it's definitely been a journey. So there's a lot of lyrics in the song, but that one in particular really speaks out to me. Um, so I thoroughly enjoy singing that song. It, it, I I mean, a, a lot of the songs on the album get me very emotional because they I relate to them a lot. I'm sure a lot of other people can too. But that song in particular, um, those lyrics speak to me in that song. Did you write the lyrics? Yeah. Um, who Who writes the lyrics or do you share it? Um, so those lyrics were already, um, had already been written. I mainly did, um, the harmonies and like the melodies and everything on the songs. Um, there's a couple of songs on the album that I put, um, a couple of my own lyrics in or changed things up a little bit, but for the most part, they were already written. And I just did like the melodies for them, like how I wanted them to be sung. What my vocals best. 
we actually did something a little different on this album than we did the first two prior albums. We actually used a writing team, so to speak, uh, that included Tiffany, uh, Travis Wills, who sang on our second album, was involved in it. And then there was another guy here that plays in a local band. There's a friend of mine named, by the name of Jeff Sines. Uh, he wrote uh, some of it. We It was a big conglomeration. Uh, and I, if I recall correctly, I, it was Jeff Sines that actually wrote the major part of the vocal, I'm sorry, the major part of the lyrics uh, for that song, that song there. But yeah, we just, we used a writing team on this one and it worked out very well. Oh yeah. It really shows. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Teamwork makes the dream work. Right. <laughs> Do you want to say anything about it, uh, Pedro? You know, it, it, that, that's a fun song to play, you know, because it's very it's haunting. Yeah. It's very, you know, so so learning it and playing it, that, that was just fun for me. And and actually, I, I, I joke with the guys during rehearsal that <laughs> as I'm playing, you know, I'm, I'm, I, I sometimes have to get, get back into my mind frame because I'm, I'm really enjoying the solo or the keyboard under the solo, the effect, you know, and, and in this song, um, uh, Tiffany, the way you vocalize, you know, the way you, you know, I mean, it's just perfect, you know, the high notes, the low notes and the volume control. I mean, so as I'm playing, I have to kind of, okay, hold on, hold on, you get, get back to this, don't miss this next part because I'm just, I'm just enjoying it as as I go along. And this is one of my favorites too. Yeah. All right, we're almost out of time here on this first one, but these guys have agreed to uh, come back because we definitely have a lot of ground to cover here, and um, uh, I thank them for that. Um, any last uh, comments on that song or? You guys didn't really have a chance to talk about Triumph. Do you guys, uh, Pedro or uh, Tiffany, want to mention anything? Or have you guys heard of Triumph and heard any of those older songs? I hadn't heard much of Triumph before um, until we did the cover of Allied Forces a while back. Um, but after doing that song, covering that one, I had listened to a few of their other songs. And 